Hello there and welcome to my channel. I'm Cassidy Cash and this is That Shakespeare Life. In the 16th and 17th century, paper was often made out of linen, just like the linen that you see that I have here today. That's one of the reasons that some of Shakespeare's plays are thought to have been lost today. We have records of plays being used for all kinds of things. There was one man that baked them into a pie. There's another man that is thought to have used spare script paper actually for toilet paper. That could have been what happened to Shakespeare's plays. If you'd like to learn more about the history of paper making in Shakespeare's lifetime, as well as why scripts were used as toilet paper and why they were baked into a pie and learn more about that person who did that, I have several podcast episodes about paper and paper making, including one specific episode all about early modern toilet paper, which is something that you would love to listen to. So I'll place links below this video to the podcast episodes that go deep into the history behind this subject. But today, what I want to show you how to do is how to make the kind of paper that William Shakespeare would have had in his lifetime. Now, this is a much smaller scale than what we would see in some of the woodcuts that show us about how paper was made from Shakespeare's lifetime, like this one and maybe this one or even this one. But I'm going to show you how to do it with stuff you already have around the house so that you can try out this piece of history for yourself. Here's what you're going to need to get started. First, you're going to need some linen. Now, I'm using some old cloth napkins. My mom actually had these around her house, didn't want them anymore. So we decided to turn them into crafts. And so I'm just taking a few of these and I'm cutting them up. You see, I started by cutting them into strips and then I'm cutting them down into little bitty pieces. We're gonna keep cutting these down into tiny pieces. It doesn't really matter what size, you just want them to be small enough that they don't get caught in step two of this process. So after you get them cut up into these little pieces, we're gonna place them in our blender. Once we paste them in the blender, we're gonna fill it up with twice the amount of cloth as water. You don't have to be exact, but you want it fully, fully covered because we're going to turn this on high and really let it pulp up the linen and we want it to really pull these fibers apart and, and break them up into the water. So we've blended this for like 30 seconds and it's created this nice pulp out of the fabric. Okay, and that's exactly what we want. We're going to pour the pulp into the strainer and strain it out, squeezing it to get all of the water out. Then you'll take the pulp over to the vat and mix your newly strained pulp up into the water. I know that feels counterintuitive, but this is the way that it works. You want it in the clean water, not the strained water. So mix it up in the vat really well. After you've mixed it up in the vat, you're gonna take your mold and decal. You can hand make these yourself, but I bought mine for like $16 on Etsy and I'll provide a link in the show notes for where I got mine. I'm sorry, it's not a mortar and decal because I want it to be mortar and pestle, but it's not, it's a mold and decal. If you call it different things too, I won't judge. But this mold and decal I like because the frame and the strainer are both attached to each other. So if you're using this in a classroom, your students can't lose them and separate them. They stay together. So I really liked that feature. And you put it together, drop it down in the vat in on an angle. You want to scoop up some of the pulp onto your frame. Then you're just going to straighten it out on the frame, kind of moving the pulp around where you need to until it looks like a nice clean piece of paper, making sure you get it off all of the edges. It works kind of like seaweed after you dip it down in there, especially with the linen. So there'll be stray stra threads that you need to straighten out and put back in line. Then you'll sponge off the bottom. You can use a sponge or here I'm just using a hand towel. Sponge off the bottom really good until it's dry from the bottom. Don't dry it off from the top. Then you will flip it over onto your couching paper. This can be any kind of paper like newspaper or an old bed sheet that you've cut up. Here I'm using an old cloth napkin spread across an old cookie sheet. I used a cookie sheet so it would catch the stray water as it's pulling it out and not make a mess on my table. Now to press it out, we're placing it between two cookie sheets. I have one that's slightly smaller than another, putting it on top and I'm gonna stand on it. The weight of the human body works just like a paper press if you don't have a paper press. Of course, if you have a paper press, you can use that. But standing on it for just a few minutes and letting your body weight press it out works just great. After pressing it for about 10 seconds, you bring it back to the table and it's time to dry. And then this is what you will go. You can go hang it up in the sun like this and let it dry. I'm going to leave mine here flat and let it dry. 
and after six to eight hours, the paper will peel up off of your couching paper and you'll have paper that you can use to write with. Okay, so we actually let these sit all until the next day and they're dry and ready to peel off of the couching paper. So you just take it, you peel the couching paper away, and now you have your paper. This is your sheet of paper. Isn't that cool? You can write on it just like regular paper, and I highly suggest you use a quill pen and some iron gall ink, just like Shakespeare. I have some other videos on the channel about how to make your own iron gall ink. If you would like to make this a combo activity, check out those links on the screen or below this video. Thanks for being here and doing this craft with me. I hope you enjoy learning something new about the life of William Shakespeare. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. If you'd like to take this activity into your classroom with coordinating history guides, podcast episodes, and some special links with Shakespeare's plays, be sure to check out Experience Shakespeare. This is the membership platform of That Shakespeare Life, where we have printable materials you can use to take activities like this one right into your classroom. Find out more at CassidyCash.com member.